Hi class, in this lecture we continue our study in chapter 10 by moving into section 10.2. In 10.2 we're going to talk about calculus with parametric equations. There's going to be multiple uh, topics in this section and the first one we want to talk about is tangents. Now when you think about tangents, right, you go back to your calc 1, um, uh, calc 2, you know, tangent, uh, tangent line to a graph, what you're going to need is the slope the instantaneous rate of change of that graph at that point and and what you should be thinking about is the derivative so now what we want to do is talk um, talking about derivatives of parametric equations okay so suppose f and g are differentiable functions and we want to find the tangent line at a point on a parametric curve okay where the where we're defined as x is some function of t and y is also some function of t okay and where y is also a differentiable function of x okay uh, so then if long as that's the important part if y is in and of itself a differentiable function of x then we have this chain rule okay and it gives if i want to find dy dt all right well that's just equal to dy dx times dx dt okay because the d, dx's will cancel out and it's the same thing here well if i want to solve this now all right to get dy dx what would you do well you would take your dx dt and you would divide it over so as long as dx dt does not equal zero, we can solve for that dy dt. And if you're given a parametric equation, this is what you're going to have. dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. Okay, and this equation here enables us to find the slope dy dx of the tangent to a parametric curve without having to eliminate the parameter t. You don't need to, like we saw in the previous section, eliminate it and just get some equation for it. Okay, we also see that the curve has a horizontal tangent line when dy dt equals zero, right? When the numerator is equal to zero. And it has a vertical tangent line when dx dt equals zero. As long as at that same value, all right, dy dt does not equal zero. Because if you do, you have zero over zero, you have indeterminate form, and then you probably can evaluate it. Anyways, this information is useful for sketching parametric curves. It's also, it's also useful to consider the second derivative um, you know, that, that's for finding things like concavity, All right? This can be found by replacing y with, by dy dx in equation one. And then you'll see here that uh, the second derivative is equal to the derivative of the first derivative or the derivative with respect to t of the numerator dy dx divided by dx dt. Okay, so you're gonna take the derivative of the first derivative and then divide that by dx dt always to find the second derivative okay so keep this equation uh, handy all right so what i want to do is i want to walk through with this both the of this formula the second derivative and the first derivative i just want to walk through one um uh, problem in detail and this is going to cover a lot of topics okay so you have this curve c is defined by the following parametric equations okay x is equal to t squared and y is equal to t cubed minus 3t Okay, so here are the four things I want to do. A, I want to show that C has two tangent points at this point, 3 comma 0, and I want to find the equations there, okay? B, I want to find the points on C where tangent is horizontal or vertical, okay? C, I want to determine where the curve is concave upward or concave downward, and then D, I just want to sketch the curve. All right, so a lot going on, right? Um, a and B are going to be applications of the first derivative, right? C, concavity, is going to be an application of the second derivative, and then we're going to put it all together and sketch the curve. Okay. First off, you have to notice where, the, remember where they're asking. They're asking you at point 3, comma 0, okay, at 3, comma 0. So the first thing you have to figure out is what t values that can happen at, okay? What possible t values. All right, so, you know, right off the bat, looking at... Um, the x value 3, right? The x value 3 occurs when t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3, right? Because when you square plus or minus the square root of 3, you get 3. So now let's also figure out where that happens with the y value. So you have to set um, the y equation equal to 0. And when you do, you solve this by factoring. And notice that um, you get the, the solutions t is equal to 0 or t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. But remember, going back, um, x has to be equal to 3, okay, so you, you're not going to use t is equal to 0 because that doesn't work out. So therefore, the point 3, 0 on c arises from two values of the parameter t, 
Okay, so you get to 3 comma 0 twice. All right, you get it at t when t is equal to the square root of 3 and when t is equal to negative the square root of 3. Okay, so how can you have the same point happen twice? All right, this, what this indicates is that c crosses itself. So when you sketch the, the, the path of this parametric equation, it's going to turn back and cross itself at that point 3 comma 0. Okay, so remember what the problem A said. Uh, find, um, we know that it has two tangents, okay, and find their equations. So to find the equation of a line, you need a point. We got the point. So now what we need is the slope. Okay, we need the slope at that point. Well, to find the slope at that point, you're going to need the first derivative, and then you're going to evaluate the first derivative for that value of t. Okay, so simply following here, right, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So the derivative of y with respect to t is just 3t squared minus 3. Derivative of x with respect to t is just 2t. All right, so what you're going to do here, you can simplify this as being equal to, just, just factoring a little, um, 3 halves and then in parentheses t minus 1 over t. All right, that'll help actually simplifying this when we get to go do the second derivative. Okay, so what you're going to do here to find the slope of the tangent line is you're going to take the values of plus or minus the square root of 3 and just plug them into the equation, okay? So when you plug this in for dy dx, okay, you plug plus the square root of 3, and then you plug in minus the square root of 3. I won't waste your time by going through the algebra of it, but when you do that and plug this in, you'll see that you end up just actually getting plus or minus the square root of 3. All right, it just so happened that it worked out that way. So the equations of the tangent line are, you take the slope using the point-slope formula, y is equal to positive square root of 3 times x minus 3, and y is equal to negative the square root of 3 times x minus 3 right, because it's y minus 0 is equal to the slope times x minus the x value, which is 3 here. So that's how you got these equations. All right, perfect. Next, we asked about the um, horizontal and uh, vertical tangent lines. All right, so C has a horizontal tangent line when dy dx is equal to 0. So looking back here, that'll happen when dy dt is equal to 0, okay, and at the same time dx dt is not equal to 0. So since dy dt is equal to that 3t squared minus 3, all right, obviously this happens. You just set this equal to 0, subtract the 3 over, or excuse me, add the 3 over, divide by 3. You get t squared is equal to 1. Solving this, this happens when t is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, so the corresponding points where this happens, if you just take the values of 1 and minus 1 and plug it into... Um, the equation, you'll end up getting um, these values here. And a little bit of a typo. One of these will produce the negative. One of these ones should be negative. I'll let you figure that part out. Okay, so C has a vertical tangent line when dx dt is equal to 0. Well, that's the 2t is equal to 0. So that is when t is equal to 0. And note that um, dy dt is not equal to 0 here. Okay, so the corresponding point when that happens, when you plug 0 in, for both uh, the um, values of x and y, you get the point 0, 0. All right, so to determine concavity, what we need to do is we need to calculate the second derivative, okay? So the way you're going to do that, okay, is you're going to take the derivative of the first derivative. So going back, this right here was our first derivative. So you need to find the derivative of this, okay, which is really easy. The constant stays, derivative of t becomes 1. This negative is going to be a positive, and it's going to be 1 over t squared. So when you do that, you get the following here. This is the derivative of the first derivative divided by dx dt. Well, that stays as 2t. And there's a little bit of an algebra cleaning this up. All right, you'll get this as the following. So this is what the second derivative is equal to. 3 times t squared plus 1 divided by 4t cubed. Okay, so now we just wanted to determine concavity. So we wanted to see where it's concave upward and concave downward. Okay, well, this is important. The numerator will always be positive. So really, you're only interested in the sign of the denominator. Okay, well, when would the denominator be positive? Okay, because it's cubed. This will happen whenever t is greater than 0. So the curve is concave upward when t is greater than 0. 
And this curve is concave downward when t is less than 0, because when you cube a negative, it stays negative. And that's all you had to do. You didn't even have to look at the numerator at all for this. Putting this all together, you can sketch the graph of this, just picking test values um, or for the value of t. And when you do, you'll end up seeing it look like this. And this is how the curve turns back on itself right here. All right, class, I know this was a, a lot, but uh, as you go through the problems this week, just make sure to follow the formula. Um, and you know, no matter how hard the, the problems get, the formulas will always stay the same.